to 25 milliliters. There's a lot of talk these days about hands-on learning. Well, you might call this hands-in learning in the Merrimack River to see how much oxygen is in the water. Any bacteria or any animals living in that water or plants will use that oxygen. For many years, the Merrimack River was used as a dumping ground for industrial polluters. Now it's being used as a classroom in a pilot program developed by UMass Lowell and the National Park Service. Students spend 90 minutes on the river doing water quality tests, learning geology, chemistry, and history. They learn about how we regulated the river and how we obstructed the river with the dams and interfered with migratory animals and migratory fish like the Atlantic salmon. So they actually see the place. They're in the place where this happened. Your golf course is soaked by a rainstorm. What happens to the fertilizer that was in the topsoil? In lab experiments on the riverbank, students take on the role of polluters who make a mess, then have to figure out how to clean it up. Gee, ever think before you came here today about stuff like that going from a golf course into a river? Yeah, it's it's kind of weird. It's all, You wouldn't think that much would make such a difference. But there's more to this than local history and learning science. These young people are getting a lesson in environmental protection that the founding fathers of the Industrial Revolution forgot. They've heard their stories from their parents to how bleak the river was 10, 15 years ago and how polluted it was, and that there is hope. You can still change things and bring them back. We want to keep the water that we have. We don't have that much of it. So we kind of need to conserve what we have. On the Merrimack River, Katie Abel with the 7 Education Report. She's being called a space superwoman. like a real video man that had. A cruise liner coming in, the love boat. <laughs> yeah, National Park Services. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. Here's the captain. He's going, get overboard. <laughs> As I sat out on the deck, I'm Beth. You'll be working with Martha also, and we work with the Songus Industrial History Center, where you started the field trip at the boarding house park, where the, the big mills are. We work in uh, a center there that has a museum and then five interactive workshop spaces. Have any of you had field trips there? In there? Which workshop did you do? Um, Building at the water room. That's fun. Yeah. All right. Well, today will be kind of a nice way to follow up on that activity. We're going to be uh, doing a water workshop with you down in the lab part that we've set up. But before we begin, what I'd like to do is just a little demonstration with you to give you a global perspective on where the water is in the world so that you can have some idea of why 
at the end of the day, we hope that you'll come away with some sense of, of uh, the need to protect the water resource that you see going outside in the Merrimack River. So what, what we have is a little model that represents all of the water in the world. And where, where is most of the water in the world? When you, when you look at the globe, where, where is the water? Ocean. Okay, right there? Okay, the ocean. Do you have, can you put a fraction with that or a percentage? Two about two thirds. Interestingly enough, our bodies are about two thirds water too, so we really, we really rely on water. We need it for survival. All right, so this is a one liter bottle that represents all of the water in the world, all of the water that's available to us. Now, water is a non-renewable resource. Do you know what that means? Anybody explain what that means? Well, once it's gone, you won't get any more. That's right. Well, I mean, what we have is, is all we have access to, it's all we've ever had access to, it's all we're ever going to have access to. Well, somebody finds water on Mars and figures out how to pipe it here. Well, here's what I'm going to do is pour off about 30 milliliters of water. Okay? And then we're going to distribute this to where it actually exists in the world. So you can see this graduated cylinder and this bottle. So most of it is in the oceans. Okay? Now, I'm going to make this look a little more ocean-like so that you can see it better. And what do we need to really make that be the ocean? Oh. Something that's in our salt. All right. We want to add the salt. We oh, yeah. just squeeze that and make it like a spout. Mm. <coughs> All right, and, and I measured out about the percentage of salt that would actually be in the salt water. Okay, want to drink? No, no why not? Why? Anybody want to drink? No, I should I, I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't ask. The eighth graders will do it. My son ate worms when he was in the eighth grade. Alright. So there is the ocean water. Where is this water in the world? Okay, some of it's in rivers. So it seems like there's just an unlimited amount of water out there, doesn't it? Glaciers. Glaciers. Glaciers, very good. And where are the glaciers? The poles, all right, at either end of the earth, and at some high mountain ranges, you will find glaciers. And actually, quite a large percentage of what is left in here is tied up in those glaciers. So I have a little cup here, and I'm going to pour out about 20 full years to represent the glacial glacia ice. Okay. So this. This is locked up in the glaciers. Now, that's good fresh water because how are glaciers formed? Ice. Ice and accumulation of what? Snow. Snow, which is fresh precipitation from the atmosphere. So it is actually a source of fresh water. What's the problem with accessing it? No. All right. We can figure out a way to melt it, to get it off the glacier and melt it. And every so often in the newspapers, particularly down around Australia, you'll see a little news story about how they're trying to retrieve an iceberg and bring it in and use it as a source of fresh water. How else is there water? Um, hmm? Groundwater. Groundwater, very good. Yeah, if you live out on a, a farm, you don't have city pipes coming out and delivering you water. You have a well system, and then some of that water is just so deep and so inaccessible that we can't, we don't have access to it. So. I'm going to put some of this into the ground, which represents inaccessible deep groundwater. Okay. And then some water we've just unfortunately jumped up so much. It's just so badly polluted that we, we don't have access to it. We can't clean it up. We don't have the technology yet to clean it up and make it useful to us. So that's, that's the poison water that we, we just can't use. And we can take this out and process. Okay. Now, that's what's left. And what do you think this represents? Rivers and lakes, Merrimack River outside. This is what we have left as useful accessible water. That's it, folks.
That's what we have in the whole world to drink, to use. And when you think about the distribution, all the water that's in the ocean, and all the water that's tied up in the glaciers, good water, fresh, you know, wonderful water if we can figure out how to get it. All of this water that's in the deep, deep ground that we don't know how to retrieve yet, we can't retrieve. Water that we've just already polluted so badly. And then this is what's left for us to use. Okay. Now, if you were a scientist and you had access to all kinds of technology and equipment and think tanks and that sort of thing, how would you approach this as a problem? Where, how would you retrieve water? Can you see any place that you'd like to start working? Uh, let's think about that. Well, they have ways of uh, taking salt water and turning it to fresh water. Okay. Do you, are you familiar with any of those ways? Um, what they do is they put water in the sacks and have a dome. And when the sun hits the dome, it evaporates mm -hmm. the water and the salt stays in the sacks mm -hmm. and drips down into the... Do you know what that process is called? Evaporation. Well, yeah, that's about, yeah, exactly right. But Tay, removing the salt? There are big plants in the Middle East that do this and other places. I think we even have a few in this country. Desalmation. Very good. Desalmation. And you know what thrills me to death? Yes, the reason I know about this is because when my son was your age, he did a whole science report on this. You'd be amazed how many people say desalinization. And I learned, if nothing else, when we researched this, that the word is desalination. You're exactly right. So that means removing the salt from it. And if, if you evaporate it, the salt is a mineral and it stays in the solution. It does not evaporate. What evaporates is the water. And if you can collect the water as it evaporates, then what you have is good fresh water. <coughs> we can figure out a way to get it to melt, right? All right, Fletcher's farm, Tyler's farm, what else do you see on that map? The watershed is. You know what water is, you know what a shed is. But when you put the two terms together, they mean something Different. Anyone know what a watershed is? Sure. It's like an area in the middle of like two mountain ranges where all the water comes down. Yeah, it's actually an area of land that includes all that water, and all the water that falls on that area of land will drain into a central artery, usually coming down to a large river like the Merrimack, and then it'll head out to an ocean. All rivers eventually drain into an ocean. And we live in the Merrimack River watershed. This is a picture of it right here. You can see the Merrimack River begins up here at Franklin, New Hampshire, comes down from Lake Wapasaki and from the Pemba Jurassic right here, and they, they combine to form the Merrimack. Goes all the way down through New Hampshire and into Massachusetts. Here we are right here, there's Chelmsford right down here. Okay, so the watershed is actually much, much more than the river itself. It's not only the Merrimack, but it's all these many, many tributaries that contribute their water to the Merrimack River. They drain the land and contribute to the Merrimack. Now, if we're up here in one of these tributaries, say we're up here at the Contuco, and we put something into the water or something washes into the water, what's going to happen if it comes into the Contuco and it's flowing along? It? It's eventually going to do what? Anybody see? It's going to go right into the Merrimack. Anything that happens in the watershed that affects the land, that affects the water, eventually pours, funnels right into the Merrimack and into anybody's water supply that drinks from the Merrimack. <laughs> oh, we know. Be kind of crowded in here. Second of all, there's four workstations at each table here and there, and at those two ends, and the same with the other two tables. You'll see there's a lot of equipment and stuff on each table that you'll be taking a closer look at. Um, and you have here at the top, and it's plugged up down at the bottom, so nothing can get out. The only way water can get out of this cup is to seep out right here. This is your surface runoff cup, okay? And each lab group will have one cup of each. He thinks he's going to sneak around me because he doesn't think I'll get off the stones while he's right. I like the stones. The stones. Space, you go outside, okay? okay. 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 okay.
Coming into the dock. Okay. What we're going to do today 
Okay. The first thing we're going to do is trying to find out whether the Merrimack River, whether we think that the Merrimack River, River is healthy or unhealthy. So I want you to use your eyes right now, okay? I want you to look at the river from what you can see. Okay. I'm glad I wore a jacket. Can you see any signs that the river is sick? I don't know, do you see any dead floating fish? No, I don't see anything like that. No sludge, I don't see any sludge. Or any fumes coming off the water. Okay. So from what we can see, would you say that the water was pretty healthy or unhealthy? Uh, unhealthy. Healthy. How about you guys up here? What would you say? Healthy or unhealthy? Unhealthy. Unhealthy. Okay, it looks pretty healthy here. Okay. How about let's use our nose? That's another um, sense we can use. Take a deep kind of a, a breath in, kind of a it's working in the water. That can make a, a river sick, can make a river unhealthy. Okay. And what we're going to do today is we're going to test is going to be for the temperature. Okay. The temperature of the water. Think about when you take a bath. Do you like your water really cold in the bath? No, it's cold for you to, it's not comfortable. I love cold Do you like it really, really hot so it's going to burn you? Cold shower. No, that's too hot. So you got to find a comfort. These gentlemen up here, what, you for, what is your test? No, Jim, I can't read you. Dissolved oxygen, okay. Think about, you said fish live in this water. What do, do the fish breathe? Water. Now, you can think of a dissolved gas if you think about um, your favorite soda. How many of you like Coke? Mine is, I, my favorite soda is Coke. How many Pepsi? Well, I prefer Pepsi. Well, think about your favorite soda, and when you open up that bottle for the first time, what do you hear? What was that? <laughs> That's right, exactly, in the water. Okay, so those are two of the tests, temperature and dissolved oxygen, that it can tell us about the health. Let's see the third test. What, what is your test about? Turbidity. Has anyone heard that word before? Turbidity. Mr. Dolan. Dolan. Turbidity. <laughs> right on. Who can tell me something about it? Turbidity. Yeah. That's right, how much minerals and other stuff, sediment that's in the water that will make it either cloudy or clear. So you're going to test to see how close oh, test uh, is pH. You must know what pH is. <laughs> Uh, what do you think of pH balance? Yeah, all right. Sure. But um, oh, that, that was that secret? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, pH, what do you think of when you think of pH? Think of pH? <laughs> you think of acids? Fragrance from And bases? Not a one. You think of deodorant, okay. Okay, but well, think about an acid. Um, an acid can be something like lemon juice. Is it an acid? Or it can be something strong like hydrochloric acid. What happens when you get a real strong acid on your skin? It burns. So imagine if the water here was very acidic, would it, what would it do to the plants and the, the animals? Kill them. Yeah, it might kill them. or It would reduce like how many can live here. Them okay, put them under stress. Okay, so those are the four word senses. We're going to try and see if we can determine how many, the light, maybe what kind of fish are in the water as well. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and start. Okay, mix the, mix the contents by turning it upside down several times. Wait about a minute. No, that's all right. They just got to get pair in the tube. They'll be all right. They'll be all right. Use the light. Um, it's healthy as oxygen. It has enough oxygen than it had in the past years. What difference does that make? Somebody else? Yeah? yeah. Like the life from all of us. Uh, 7 to 14 ppm means that, that the water is natural. It's not in any danger of being an acid. Does that surprise you given what you've learned about the history of the Merrimack River and how it's been used over the years? Yeah, it does. Oh, you see a 3 eyes. And here's a question for you for anybody in this group. Uh, you know, the founding fathers of the Industrial Revolution built all the old mills and stuff around here. They weren't thinking about whether this river was healthy or not, right? Uh, you see it any differently from the way they did maybe when they were 
people with the environment and how everything the river does affects um, the river and people putting materials into the river, like they were at the back of the lab, they were pouring oil and other things into the ground and into the soil and it ended up in their water. And that's what they um, this is my fifth year. Um, when you were studying science, there wasn't a No, there wasn't. It hasn't been in the last couple of years where we've taken a new emphasis. And a lot of it has to do with the Massachusetts framework with the Ed Reform Act and attacking energy into it. He's good, um, isn't he? And the environment and applying it to all the sciences. Why is that a mandate? What is the um, because it hadn't been done in the past as much as it should be. And the things that what the Sangha Center is doing now is fantastic. I mean, it webbed them all together. That's good. That's good. Okay, great. Um, so what is it? It was almost like he was teaching how they were so they're going to love this. Yeah, to take back to school and that there's a lingering thing that you look as you are. I, I hope that they, they've heard their stories from parents to how the river was 10, 15 years ago and how great it was, and that there is hope we can still change things and bring them back as long as people learn how to solve problems. And solve the problem solving. That's what we're going to do. And it's Jill. Yes. Good job. <laughs> okay. well, it's good to I would ask them to pull it out. At least we could get it off the television. Oh, get yeah. the end. Now we're heading back this way, so I'd be better off being down there. All right, that's where I'm going to go. Do you yeah, right. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, we travel in style. I mean, you, you know, I know it's good to us. I'm glad just the rest of the people are going to do it. Yeah. People get so surprised when I respond. I was surprised how quickly it was just fine. Like, they checked an hour. Is this all done by remote with the mic to there? What? Yeah, it's yeah. all so hooked up to one wireless mic. It's really nice. That's really great. It's like, yeah, it's a warm around with it. Especially on both. Thanks <laughs> again. This is airing. This is airing at seven. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Pat. They want to start a vibe. Don't make a vibe. Parts of the river. Let's kind of switch gears. Ask about the river. Let's change it again. And the help. Maybe if we were going fast enough, we could have some water skiers in the back. Or, now, in the 1820s, there was a different use for this area. They used this water for water power. Friends with a guy named Francis Cabot Lowell. Does that name sound familiar at all? Yeah, do you think they named the city after Francis Cabot Lowell? Yeah, he was a guy. He had the idea for all these mills, and he started his mills down in Waltham, Massachusetts. And they were growing so well that they wanted to find a new place. They wanted to find a place with a larger waterfall. Okay, so they came up looking. It's about straight out there. The side of the boat there. That's, that's a good sign of... If you see a bird like that on this room, it's a very good sign. It's a diving bird. It will dive down into the water. It dives down into the water and catches the fish. It's kind of, it, it can go very far just into the water.
actually going to get out over here, and we're going to go to the overlook there and be able to see the life on the other side of the dam. You think it's going to look a lot different than what it looks like on this side? Yeah. Okay. This morning there were some fishermen here that they were actually they caught a smallmouth bass, so they pulled that up, and they also found some carp this morning. They saw it in the water, so you have to be on the lookout as we get up. The brick building we are also going to be walking through is the Pawtucket Gatehouse. Okay. This gatehouse has large gates or kind of doors. You think of maybe big garage doors down in underneath that control the water that go out into the northern canal, which is right behind. Mammoth Road. All right, the boat right up here. So I do need everyone to face the inside of the boat, and please put your hands in your laps, or at least get them off the sides of the boat so we don't get any smashed fingers. As we get off, I'd like you again to watch me. When I stand up is the time when we're all going to stand up, okay? So don't, don't stand up until I do. And when we get off, I would like you to um, leave all your clipboards and pens and stuff behind. If you'd like to take your, your binoculars along, you can. You can put them around your neck, okay? And I'd also like you to leave your life jackets on. If you'd like to loosen them up, that's okay, but don't take them off. Keep them with you. Oh, nice canals. I think I see a body down. You can like walk on it. Okay, we're going to leave right down in here first. Come in. Pay attention. On that side, you look, they have drained the canal. So it's much lower on that side than it is up here. But imagine if your boat coming along down the river and you wanted to get down the northern canal. This is something called a lock chamber. Has anyone heard of a lock chamber before? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. It kind of acts like a water elevator. Levels were even on either side. Then they would open up the gates and the boat would float through. Once the boat was in, they'd close the gates and they'd drain the water out. So like a bathtub. Drain it down. Picture this. This is on the edge of the falls. What's been thrown into the river? Oh my goodness! And these are the falls. This, the Tucker Falls. One, two, three. 
oxygen. What, one of the way that oxygen gets in the water is when it's moving. It is moving, but it still looks pretty calm. Okay. So we might find a different reading of dissolved oxygen in here. And turbidity. Do you think it is as deep in, 
in the canal as it is in the river. I can't see. No, this is probably about eight feet deep, maybe. I'm sorry, turbidity would probably be different. <laughs> Ahead of us, we can see another gatehouse on the left, the red building. Okay, again, controlling that water, headed down into the city. This is the way to downtown. If we wanted to get to downtown Lowell, we'd just keep going this way. Okay. On the right side is, a, is a, another lock chamber, again, where the boats would go so that they could get through. You don't want to drop, block off all the water when a boat goes through, so that's why you need to split it between transportation and power. He's good. He's good. He's really good with this boat. Let me tell you. I would have hit the tree by now. <laughs> and I want to get a picture of us. I don't think I had the song we went through the last time. Let's shoot the ducks. No, we can't do that. Hey guys. Oh, uh. Look at this bouncing down. Don't kill us. I'm going to fight. 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 I'm going to Oh, at, at one leg? <laughs> at one leg. What do you mean? Yeah. It happened here after, it hasn't happened in 32 years. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Dalton, will you be a scientist? Go far down until you don't see it anymore. Just tell me when. So when you don't start seeing the uh, the white, the reflection anymore, you stop it. You still see it, right? You still see it? He's gone. You can still see it, right? I can still see it. Barely, but yeah. Oh, I can. Okay, stop. Okay, stop. All right, take the reading. See where it is on that thing? I can see it. All right, good. You guys couldn't see it when I was dead. Uh -huh. I can see it right now. Because I just pulled it up a little. Yeah. So we lower it back down. All right, bring it up and count the... Uh... Do I roll back up again? <laughs> <laughs> How many did you have? Three meters. How many feet was it? It just said three meters. It said three meters? Yeah. Three meters. Quarterback. <laughs> 
What's he say? Hello, Mr. Dolan. Say, Mr. Dolan, you're my idol. <laughs> what did you do? Hey, Alex. What? what? It was just an excuse. <laughs> For the A. Alex, yeah. what? here goes your A. <laughs> like he had one anyway. <laughs> Anybody hey, Mr. has Mr. Dolan, <laughs> you're not my idol. Ah, <laughs> uh, we are. Uh, I got you on tape. You're dead. You realize. No, that was uh, you're so good. This is Brian Manning here. He's been excellent today. Oh, were you on television too? I was. Well, you were, yes, Leah did a nice job. <laughs> right on the other side of that bridge is where my father crashed his airplane. Say <laughs> <laughs> so that again. Are you serious? Stay seated again until I stand up. Okay. Anyone who has those life jackets that are kind of, yeah, that are those football. Yeah. If they say Jackson on it, those stay on the boat. Everyone else, I need to have you bring your life jacket up to the boathouse. Okay? I also